Thank you. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, once again, good afternoon to, um, I believe, most of you, and good morning to our friends in Guam. Thank you all for either staying a little bit late or joining us early this morning to join in on today's webinar. Um, we're real excited to see that there is a lot of people on here, um, and I am very, very hopeful that this webinar will um, um, will provide you all with a lot of needed information. Um, just so you know, and to make sure that you're on the right meeting, this webinar is on the online data collection system. Um, what we use is OLDC is what most of you all know. Um, I think if you are like me and my colleagues, you probably have a love-hate relationship with OLDC. Um, sometimes it works great for us, and sometimes it doesn't feel like it works so well. Um, that being said, um, then we have decided to put together um, uh, and host this webinar for everyone. Um, and the hope is that we'll all become a little bit more familiar with the system um, and that we'll be able to figure out some of those little nuances um, and be able to work within the system a little bit better. Um, this series has been designed to specifically to our states. Um, and so we're hoping that information that you'll receive um, will you know, we'll speak to exactly what it is that you need to do in order to successfully um, uh, submit your reports into the OLD system. Um, this being said, I want to go ahead and put it out there before I forget. After today's webinar training, um, well, and actually during a um, little bit during the training, there will be a um, for you all fill out. Um, we're really hoping that you all do. Um, the survey really helps to advise us on, on our different trainings and different webinars. Um, let's us know what we're doing right. Let's us know what we need to uh, maybe work a little bit on. So please make sure that um, before you um, get off that you'll click a link. It's a quick survey monkey. So it's pretty pretty painless, um, but please make sure that you go to that. The link will be posted into the chat box, and then it again will um, be also given to you at the very end of our training. Um, so without further ado, because I don't want to take up a whole lot of time, um, I want to introduce you to our trainer today. We are so lucky um, that our partners at, at Grant Solutions um, have agreed to conduct this training and to partner with us today. Um, and so today we have Ms. Bettina Copeland. She is a senior technical trainer with Grant Solutions. She is responsible for delivering grant tour and grant recipient training on all Grant Solutions services. Um, today, she'll train you um, on the Grant Solutions Online Data Collection Services System. The training will provide insight on how to access the system, an overview of the system, and details on how to complete the 424M report and the ACF 204, which we all know is coming up, so this training uh, is very timely. In addition, the training will include what revisions are required on a form or also on a, re on a report. Uh, so please um, help me welcome Ms. Copeland um, to training, um, and hopefully we'll get a chance to learn a lot. Bettina, thanks for joining us. I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Tina, if you are speaking, you may be on mute. We can't hear you. And I was. Thank you. <laughs> How about now, Keisha? Can I get a thumbs up or we're good to go? We are good to go. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. So thank you, Keisha, for the introduction. I'm as she stated. My name is Katina, and I am going to be your instructor for today. Um, just some very basic house rules. Um, all the lines are muted. We will keep all the lines muted for, um, for today. If you have any questions we'd like to ask, if you could please kindly just enter those into the chat. The chat is monitored and questions will be addressed throughout the session. If for some reason we cannot get to your um, questions during, during the session, please know uh, we'll follow up with you later with those responses. Um, in order to access the chat here in Zoom at the bottom of your screen, you should see like an, uh, multiple options there. Um, you see the, the um, if you scroll down, you'll see um, the chat icon. If you click the chat icon, it will open up into a box, typically in the right window of your screen. From there, if you need to ask any questions, please make sure you put it to two, to everyone. 
please do not send it directly to the panelists. We want everyone to see all the questions. In the event that we answer, um, we, we, you know, we have opportunity to address that question, we can address it publicly for everyone else, right? So now that you've seen me, I'm gonna hide my camera here so we can go ahead on and get started. So in terms of today's agenda, um, we're gonna start with an introduction to grant solutions. Um, as well as um, talk a little bit about log, the login process and log into Grant Solutions. And we're going to talk about OLDC, um, the home screen, how you go about verifying existing your existing permissions. And then we're going to actually review some of the new home screens as well in um, the new uh, Grant Solutions for some of you. We made some updates to our Grant Solutions Grant Recipient View a few months ago. And so it may be your first time seeing them or you've already been in, so I'm just going to review at a high level some of those items. Um, and then I'll go directly into OLDC, show you how to access and review reports, specifically the 424M, as well as ACF um, 204 forms. And in that process, um, I'm going to walk through the process um, for each of the reports and forms of initializing the report, saving it, adding attachments, validating it, certifying it, and then submitting the report. And then in the event you need to make revisions, I'll show you how you can make revisions. I'm not going to show you on both, because if I show you on one, I would have showed you showed um, it's the same process for the other. So I'll show you how to make revisions on one of the, um, either the report or the form. And then we'll close out the training with access to resources that you will have um, and any questions and answers. One of the common questions I get early on in the training is, will I have access to this training um, at the completion? Absolutely. There's going to be a recording that will be available for you to view at a later time. Um, also, you will have access to documentation, not immediately this week, um, but um, the, your grantor staff, um, they will communicate with you documentation to support the 424M as well as ACF um, 204 forms in terms of instructions on how to complete it. Um, so for those of you who are wondering where can you get your hands on or hands on that, um, that's going to come later. I would say, venture to say, probably with the next five to seven business days. Um, in terms of a copy of the presentation, um, there I did actually attach one at the top. Um, I'm not sure if everyone can see it, but I did attach uh, a PDF there that's so introduction to um, online um, OLDC. And so, um, you should be able to see it there. If you don't, let me know. I can always reattach it. And um, if, if someone can let me know whether or not they can see that or download and access that, that would be great, um, just by a simple chat. All right, so let's continue on. Let's start with the introduction. So I'm going to cover some things outside of, the, outside of the system first, and then I'll move over to Grant Solutions. Um, so the Grant Solutions online data collection system is a convenient web-based tool that's used to submit forms. You're hearing me refer to them as forms and reports because depending on what's required um, for um, your grant program, sometimes it's referred to as a form and sometimes as a report where you have to report out at the completion, right? So it's essentially is one and the same. The tool that allows us to uh, manage both types of information, all right? Um, secondly, grantees um, can either validate, certify, submit, or retrieve, or, or ret um, re um, excuse me, re um, retrieve information pertinent to the forms in OLDC. So you, I'm going to show you how to do that as we walk through the process. Um, grantors can e like electronically review, approve, and return forms for corrections, which is why I want to show you that revision process um, in the event that. Um, you need to make corrections, or if it's kicked back to you for a reason by your grantor, you're able to do that. OLDC is a role-based system, which means users have to have specific permissions in order to access and or perform certain actions. And so the following um, items actually are the, the different job types that are set, off, set up in the system for you. Now, I know many of you may be, may be familiar with these roles and some may not, and that's fine. I'm going to show you in the system where you can go to identify the type of role or permission that you have. And if you need additional role um, or permission, I'll share with you the form that you'll need to complete in order to do so. 
Uh, but let's start with the grantor, excuse me, the grant administrator. This individual assigns all grantee roles within an organization. Then you have your grant director. Um, this default roles are only view and certify, which means they can only review in electronically signed forms. Then we have the authorized official. Um, this role can, a, can view only as well and certify, which means they can only view and electronically sign forms. Then you have your data entry person. Um, this default role includes adding files, creating new forms, deleting forms, editing existing forms, and viewing and printing forms. And then we have our view only user where the default roles are view and print forms. Now, what you do want to know about these, you do have the ability to have multiple roles. So you can, that you can manage that based off of what's required and, um, for your organization. Let's talk a little bit about account credentials and requests before we head over to Grant Solutions. Um, so, so for starters, Grant Solutions Management Services for new users. Before you can gain access into our Grant Solutions system, um, every user is required to sign and return the Grant Solutions rules and behavior. That is assuming that you already, if you already have access to Grant Solutions, then you've already signed that. You can then just move on to the um, recipient user account request form. But if you a, are a first time user in Grant Solutions, regardless of partner um, or agency, then you would need to complete the form, all right? So that, that's the exception there, right? Um, but once you complete the rules and, rules and behavior form, you also need to submit your recipient user account reform to the Grant Solutions Help Desk at help at grantsolutions.gov. All right. The recipient authorizing official must sign part two of the recipient account request form. And I'm going to show you where that you can find that form in a few moments. In terms of grant solutions management for existing users, um, they do not need to, to resubmit the rules of behavior or create new accounts. Um, for modifications to an existing account, you still need to go to the recipient user account request form, which is part two, and submit that to help at grantsolutions.gov. If for some reason you're not sure what to do and you need assistance, you can always go to your grant um, uh, officer contact, whoever your contact is in the grant office, um, to help you to identify what you need to do. Um, so um, just a few things about the account before we move over to Grant Solutions. Once a user account is created, you have you have received two emails automatically, generically. One is going to include, the first email will include your username and a link to Grant Solutions, and the second one will include a temporary password. You have 24 hours to reset that password. Um, if you do not reset that password within 24 hours, you can simply do a password reset. It will come to your email. That link is going to be active for one hour for password reset. Um, what's important note here as well is that when accessing Grant Solutions Management Services, any of our services, um, you please use Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. Um, Internet Explorer is no longer supported with our services. Yes, Edge is supported. I do have a question. Yes, Edge is supported. So now let's, before I continue here, I'm going to drop over here to Grant Solutions to our homepage and just kind of show you where you can find what you need. So I'm going to make this a little larger for you. So to get to Grant Solutions, you can simply in the browser top type grantsolutions.gov and it would automatically populate, all right? You can do www. or just top, type grantsolutions.gov into the web browser URL and it will appear. This is your home page. On your home page, um, you have the ability to log in from the top right. Before I get into login, well, no, let's just go there. Let's select login. Once I select login, it will take me to my login screen, okay? Everything essentially that you need is here. You need to know. Before we get into actually logging in, um, requesting a use new user account. Underneath the submit button, there is a hyperlink to request new user account. Once you select request new user account, if you need it, it's going to take you to the getting started request a user account screen. Going to scroll down, as you can see within this section, we have grant solutions paper registration for the federal user, as well as um, the recipient user. Okay, so we're, fo we're focusing on the recipient user. That's what you are, the grant recipient. 
All right. And so what you'll need to do is gives you the three steps right here. The requester must complete and sign the first section of the recipient user account request. So I'm going to select that. Once I select that, it opens up the grant recipient user account request form. You can print it if you like, all right? That's the very first thing that you see on the screen that appears. It gives you instructions how to create a new account or simply how to update an existing account. Um, when I scroll down, it tells you how to close an account. Speaking of closing accounts, if for some reason um, your account is inactive for 60 days, it does not close your account, but it does make your account inactive. You simply need to email help at grantsolutions.gov and they can reactivate your account. All right. Um, we're going to scroll all the way down. In terms of roles and authorities, here we provide a description of what the different role definitions are. Um, so you kind of know who needs access to do what in um, OLDC. And once you scroll down, if you are a new user to Grant Solutions, then you'll need to complete this um, rules of behavior. If you already have access to it, but you just need modifications to your role or role added, add it, you do not need to complete this form. Right. And next week, this is actually the um, Grant Recipient User Account Request Form, the second part, where you actually identify the agency and all, provide all the details. In the event, as I stated earlier, you need to make modifications to your account. Maybe um, someone left, um, and so um, you need to take on additional role. You'll need to complete this form as well as all of the updated information as required. So that is your user account request form. I'm going to close that window and return back to my getting started request a user account. On this same page, the right, um, you'll see there's a section for FAQ. Um, these are pretty generic, frequently asked questions, but when in doubt, you can always go there. Um, also, um, of course, you have your grants office staff, ACF, to assist you with questions. Um, but we also, we're available as well. Our help desk is available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time, and we're closed on federal holidays. Um, and then we provide a phone number as well as the email address, which is help at grantsolutions.gov. For you, to get in, for you to get in contact with us. Right, and so now I'm going to scroll back up, go back to login, to the login screen. Now, on the login screen as well, to the right, you'll see Grant Solutions Update. This is very important because on this, in this Grant Solutions Update, I'm going to select the hyperlink. It's going to tell you when we have system maintenance and what's upcoming. This is very useful for you. Um, it tells you the standard downtimes and our next plan downtime, which we have one on Thursday. Um, if there are any upcoming releases, we do explain to you or give you a, a little insight into what those are. Um, one of the biggest um, releases coming up is a unique um, um, I, um, entity identifier. Um, that's something that has to be in fact April 4th. So that's something that we are progressively moving forward to. If you want to learn more about that, well, here it is right here on the screen. Uh, we do offer a master series training. Um, sometimes um, there is information available for you as grant recipients um, that would be helpful for you to know. Um, but pr most of these are really geared towards our grantors. But, you know, if you'd like to see, you're welcome to join us. So now I'm going to scroll up and hit the back button. I'll take us back to our login screen. As I stated earlier, um, when you receive your um, email with your credentials, you're going to receive a username and pass, username and use link to the website and then your password and a second email. Now, when you're attempting to log into Grant Solutions um, with your Grant Solutions password, please be advised that you have three attempts to enter a password. On your third attempt, it will lock you. Okay, it's going to lock you for about an hour, but you don't have to wait. You can just do your password reset and log into the system. Okay. Forgot password. This is how you reset your password. So underneath the submit button on the login screen, you can select forgot username and password hyperlink, and it will take you directly to the reset or recover your login settings. Um, simply, if you forgot your password, you can reset with your username and email address. Or if you don't know your username, you can just use your email address, and it will send it di your credentials directly to your email address.
So now I'm going to return back to my PowerPoint for a moment here. And before I move into the system, I just kind of want to talk with you kind of a little about the workflow because I think it's important that you understand um, just at a high level. And when we get actually into OLDC and the system again, I'll review it again. Uh, but I just want to add a little context to what we're doing and how I'm setting you guys up. Um, and so grantees must perform specific steps um, to submit forms in OLDC, and this is the submission process. So um, this very, the very first part of it is that you're going to save um, save information. Um, whatever you save is going to, you have to save, otherwise it will not retain in the system. Once you enter and save the information at that point, um, you would then validate. And the system validates, it does a rule check to make sure that you've completed all of the required fields. Um, and in some of our forms and reports, all the fields are not required, but you need to complete the form in its entirety anyway. After you validate, um, and then if you have author, um, grant, um, grant, grantee authorizing authority, then you will certify. That is a specific role that can certify. Everyone cannot certify, all right? So that applies on electronic signature. And at that point, then there's a submission process that has to take place um, where it's submitted to the grantor. Once it's submitted to the grantor, changes cannot be made, okay? Um, unless you make the changes and unsubmit before the grantor um, um, takes it and reviews it, all right? Um, but even if they, uh, if the grantor actually um, starts making changes, um, they can send it back to you to make corrections and revisions, and I'll show you that process. Um, just note, when a form is submitted, an email notification is sent to the designated grantee and the grantor staff. That's just a way of just notifying that um, a form has been submitted. So now let's move on to the login process. So I'm going to close out the public site here. And today I am going to strictly work with um, our, what we consider a bird, an iteration of, for lack of a better word, of our production environment. So it's not the exact same, um, but it's similar in nature. Okay. So I'm, I'm so I've already had my URL in here. I'm going to select login. Once I select login, it's going to pull, pull up my login screen. And now I'm going to enter my username and password. Once I enter my Grant Solutions username and Grant Solutions password, I will select submit. Once I select submit, it's going to take me directly into Grant Solutions. Now, if this screen is new to you, then you probably haven't logged in in a while, um, but that's okay too. I'm gonna take a few moments here just to kind of go over this screen um, so we're all on the same page. Now, this is not the purpose of the training, but I think it's important that I share um, so, some of this information with you so you kind of know what to do on this screen. So this is Grant Solutions, um, and at the top of the screen beside the Grant Solutions logo, um, you'll see the name of the grantee that I am currently logged in as. So you'll see your organization's name there. Beside your organization name, you'll see the word opportunity. If you select opportunities, it allows you as a grant recipient to go to apply to a direct announcement. So if you apply, use Grant Solutions to apply to announcements, that's where you would do that. Applications, right beside that is applications. Um, hyperlink. When you select the uh, applications, the word applications, it will take you directly to a list of applications that have been initiated and awarded. So if you log into Grant Solutions, you go to opportunities, you apply to an announcement, uh, but you don't complete it, you know, you have, um, you need to come back. Once you log back in, you would come to applications, find that um, application that you initiated and complete it from there. And then grants currently is not an active URL at this time, but it will eventually house all of the awarded grants. And then to the right of grants, we see an icon that appears as a question mark. This is our help text. Once you select the icon, it will open up a brand new window to your grant recipient support and reference documentation. I'm gonna close that window, return back to grant solutions. Beside that help um, text icon, um, you'll see there is an avatar, it says AO. That's the authorizing official, that's the role that I'm currently logged in. I actually have a couple roles on this account at this time. So I'm gonna select the drop, the, the arrow down. When I select the arrow down, 
it shows me uh, what I have the ability to do, to do within that avatar. Um, and so in this case, um, you can update the profile. Um, you can change your password. You can also um, take a look at your user role. That is very important. Um, look at notification preferences. That allows you to make changes to notifications as it relates to when you receive an email or not. Um, or online data collection, that's where we're going to go in a few moments and spend some time. And then uh, provide feedback. We do offer the opportunity for you to provide feedback on our system. Um, and then pending grants is when you have an award that has been awarded to you, you'll receive a notification. And you, depending on your workflow, um, you have to go into the system and accept the award. That pending grant is waiting there for you. So that's what that process where you would accept an award. And then there's another option for you to switch back to Classic View. That's where you go back to the Classic um, Grant Solutions uh, Grant Solutions View, which is not this view; it's a different view. Um, the old um, user interface that should be, but we're looking at the U the newer um, um, user interface at this time. Um, so that's what switch back to Classic means. And then the ability to log out. So I have a question in the chat, and I'm going to take it before I continue. So the question is. When you mention about how we can have multiple roles, is it a conflict if the person who completes a report is the same person who authorizes to sign the document? Is it allowed or will, will the system will allow? So the system will allow that, Christine, because depending on the size of your organization, you may be the person that does all of that, right? Um, but the system does allow uh, for you to be able to do all of that. The role that I'm currently logged in as right now allows me to do all of that. I have all the permission for that. Excellent question. Okay. So now back to the My Grants List screen. So here on the My Grants List screen, underneath the My Grants List um, label, you'll see there's an option that says Show Close Grants. If I select the option to Show Close Grants, I will only see all of the closed grants down below um, in the note cards as instructed. You'll see when you look at, um, when you take a look at our, each um, of the, the note cards that the status says closed. Okay, so you're going to have the award number, the application. Well, in this case, is the award number is closed. It gives you the project title and the grant program for all of the awards. I'm going to flip that back because I want to see show. I want. I don't want to show all closed grants. I want to see all active as well. So if you notice, once I uh, return it back to the original um, um, to not show closed grants. Now for one of my grants down in one of the note cards, you see the status is active and there is a green indicator beside active. Okay. To the right of my grants list, um, there are two options to view um, these grants, all grants either in list view. I select the list view icon. It gives me a list of all of the grants. And um, to the right of that list view, there's another icon that's called grid view. This is the grid view of the My Grants list. So you can decide which one you would prefer to use. Uh, but you can't search this page for all grants. So as you can see in this example, I have quite a few grants up here. So now that I've covered that, um, now I'd like to move on and let's head on over to OLDC. So for those of you, for the purpose, um, just so we're all on track with where are we, uh, what we're doing this time, I'm actually going to transition over to OLDC, the home screen, and talk you through um, just some, some basic things on that screen before I actually go into some of the forms. So now to get to OLDC, I'm going to go to the avatar, which is at my top right, select the arrow down button. And next, I'm going to select online data collection. Once I select online data collection, it takes me directly into OLDC. All right. And so this is your OLDC um, collection home screen. Now, this is um, our older um, user interface, and, uh, but I want to switch to the enhanced. So how do I do that? To the, to the right of the screen, you'll see switch home page enhance. There is a hyperlink there. I select that hyperlink. It's going to open up the new user interface. 
And this is the user, user um, interface we're going to work with today. So at the top of the screen, we have the online data collection. We shows you who is logged in the last time this individual logged in. Um, there's a hyperlink to help in FAQs, and then you can end OLDC. If you select the end OLDC option, it's going to just close out this window and return you back to Grant Solutions, to the My Grants List screen. To the left here, um, well, before I get started, before I get started, if you are a first time user of OLDC, the very first time you log in, you may receive a message that says, do you uh, want to keep the enhanced OLD screen home screen or do you want to default to the new page? If you say yes, it's going to set the enhanced screen to automatically default every time you log in, it will come directly to the screen. If you say no, it's going to take you to the regular screen, which is the previous screen I was just on. So that's the very first time you log in is going to give you that option. So now that we're back on this screen, now I want to just kind of go over the, the menu options here. So on the left of the OLDC home screen, um, this is your main menu. Right? The left links here are what we're going to use to kind of maneuver around to find reports, but you can also use the tabs as well. The tabs are, um, are options for you to find information as well, right? Um, so to get started, let's kind of look at the, the left menu here first. So report form entry. This link allows you to enter data into forms and reports. We'll come back to that later, and I will show you how to do that. It also allows you to retrieve previous information and current data, right? User system settings. User system settings allows you to customize the way all these is used. So I'm going to select user system settings. And here you can see it has your user preferences, view assignments, and view grant settings. So I'm going to go back to all these home by selecting all DC home from the main menu. Also, you have your help and FAQ and news and tips. The thing about the help and FAQs and news and tips, it takes you to the same screen. So if I select help FAQs, it's going to open up the FAQs here at Grant Solutions. I'm going to close that window. If I select news and tips, it takes me to my online data collection resources. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's a change. Earlier it wasn't doing that, so I apologize. Uh, but yes, th this is how it's supposed to work. These are your resources. And then end, we do not want to end OLDC. In addition to you using these left options, menu options, you have the ability to use activity reports. And activity reports displays reports that were recently accessed by the user. So the, in terms of excuse me, the My Recent Activity Reports. So if you've gone in, if you viewed a report, or if you edited a report um, recently, it's going to display here in the table, and I will show you that once I make an update to a report. Activity Reports. Activity Reports allows you to search for reports in progress, submitted or approved over the past two years. Um, to access historical data, you want to use a report form entry link from the main menu that's over to the left um, <clears throat> if necessary, all right? But you can use this activity report as well. As, as you can see, you can search by program as well as grantee. Next, we have report due. Report due allows you to access reports that are currently available for submission. Um, so once the report is submitted, it's removed from this tab and now it's accessible over the My Recent Activity. So honestly, guys, in order to, this is more advanced. Um, and in some of your documentation, we actually use this to show you how to walk through the process as well as this way as well. But your report form entry is going to be the easiest way for you to find information. Um, and so now what I'd like to do is go back to the most recent activity. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to verify what existing permissions that you have. To do that, you're going to go to user system settings from the select that from the left menu. Once you select that, it takes you to your user settings page. Here from the user settings page, you're going to select view assignments. Once you select view assignments, it takes you to the program and grant e selection screen. Step one is to select the grant program. So from the select, I select the program drop down, I'm going to select temporary assistance for needy families. And step two is to select the grantee. I am going to select Alabama, excuse me, Arizona. I said one thing, I selected the other. How about that? Once I do that, notice that under underneath program and grantee selection, you'll now also see view assignments. And it tells you the different report types available for this particular grantee as well as the different roles. So if there is a role that you feel like you should have and it's missing, this is how you would know whether or not it's missing or not, okay? If you don't see it here, then you don't have the, the ability to perform that action. This is also a good idea if you're trying to compare what roles you do and don't need or talk through it with your grants office specialist um, or contact grants office contact then printer friendly is a good idea maybe to print this as a point of reference when you're having a conversation with them so they can make sure that you have the right uh, roles and permissions. So I'm going to return back to my OLDC home to do so. I'm going to use my, back, my breadcrumb. So my left menu option, I'm going to select OLDC home. So the next thing is before we move into reports, I'm going to see if I have any questions over here in the chat. So I have a one question here. It says, for the option of the closed grant, is there a certain grant period where the closed grant note card would no longer appear in OODC? So the the note card is on grant solutions in your grant solution system. It's going to be there in your history forever as long as you have access to grant solutions. Note, the note card on that screen, I'm going to go back there right now, is separate from OLDC. So we're in OLDC now. You're referring to this screen here. This is my grants list. This my grants list screen is separate from this OLDC system. Um, it's one and the same. It's just how we connect you guys to the system, but it's like a branch off from Grant Solutions. Okay, so this note card existence here um, is just information that you have access for forever. However, um, the, it's not connected to um, OLDC in that manner. If that makes sense, Christine. <clears throat> So now I'd like to go ahead and continue, and let's go ahead and um, take a look at which forms we're going to take a look at. So we're going to look at the SF424M as well as the ACF204 um, form. As a reminder of the process, um, we did go through this process already, um, so that we're going to take you through the submission steps, show you how to save and validate, certify, and then submit it. Of the question, what would what could be reasons why I would not be able to see the TANF grants in the My Grants list? Excellent question. Now, we're not doing that training today, Tanya, but I am going to answer that question for you because that is a really good question. If it has not been awarded, if, if it hasn't been awarded, you're not going to see it on My Grants list. If it's been awarded, it should be listed here somewhere. So now let's look at the 424M first. All right. 
So the question is, how do I get there? <clears throat> We're going to go to the left menu selection and select report form entry. It takes me to my form selection page. <clears throat> Here on my report on my form selection page, you have to select the program name name. So in my case, I have access to temporary assistance for needy families. My grantee name, I'm going to select Arkansas. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. My report name and my drop down, I'm going to select mandatory grant application. That's my SF424M. And once I do that, it populates my period. Now, I'm going to do the 10, um, the reporting period of October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2021. But as you can see, there are a couple columns in this table. We have the reporting period, the report status, and then actions. In the actions column, you'll see a blue plus sign. And once you hover over, it's going to tell you what, what that action actually means. In this case, it means create. So we need to, need to create this form. So I'm going to select the blue plus sign. Once I select the blue plus sign, it's going to take me to um, my report progress form for the application SF424M4, right? At the top, I want to draw your attention to you now your menu selections. You now have OLDC Home, Form Selection, Report, and Report Form Status. We will need those. We also have in the middle of the screen the program name, your grantee name, the report name, the report period, start and end date, as well as the fact that this report is initialized. And I'm going to show you something. I am going to go back to my form selection. And when I go to my form selection, should have shown initialize. I wonder why I didn't. Well, probably because I didn't save it. So let's go back here, select the plus sign. Because I didn't save anything, it didn't show it as initialized. So where is report progress? Underneath report progress, there are options that shows you where you're moving here. There is a menu option, your report progress. It's currently shown initialized. Um, once we save, it will show edited. Once we validate, it will show validated. Once we certified, it will show certified. Once we submit it, it will show submitted. And then underneath that report progress bar um, are your, your functions in terms of the actions you can take. You can save this form. You can view add attachments, validate, and print. Now, I'm going to move through this form a little fast, faster because I'm not here to explain the form to you. Um, but what's more important is the, some of the functionality on the form in case you need to use it. So that's what I'm going to focus my attention on today. And so um, I'm just going to enter information all the required fields. So if it's not 100% accurate, it just just know that I'm not a specialist in ACF. We have people on the line for that. I'm here to train you on how to use the system. So if there are questions about what information you need in specific fields, um, please add those to the chat and or reach out to your grants office on contact. So I just selected my type of submission. Um, now, here's another thing to help you out with understanding what each one of these fields mean. Um, and we have actually embedded descriptions into the system. So for example, uh, for 1A, if I select type of submission, it's a hyperlink. A uh, window will appear that tells you, it just tells you what to do, right? But some of these items actually give you a description of what's required. So if I go down to 7A, applicant information, a pop-up will appear and actually tell me for A, B, A through F what each of the fields mean and what you need to enter. So when in doubt, start there first okay, before you reach out to your um, grants office staff contact um, because we do provide descriptions of what each of these fields are. I select OK to close the box. And now I'm just going to quickly just kind of um, walk through this. And I'm going to do all of the quad fields only. So 
Okay, and I, kn I already know some things that have thrown me an error. And we'll talk about errors in a moment. So I just entered some information on some of the screens here. Um, I'm going to scroll down here to CFDA numbers and titles. So this is line 10 on this form. Um, you may have the need to enter more than one. And this is a table format, which means you have the ability to add additional line items. And so underneath um, I, um, item number 10, you see where it says add CFDA numbers and titles one. One indicates there's one row, okay? If I need to add a row, I can add a row. If I need to delete a row, I can delete a row, okay? So I'm going to add, say, two rows. So I change in my drop down the number to do to two and select it add. Once I select it add, the system is going to update, and now it will give me two more rows to add additional CFD numbers and titles as necessary. You will have your catalog of federal domestic assistance numbers, um, the CFDA title, and then if you realize, oh, I don't need all those, I need to delete those, then you can simply delete them by placing a check in two of the boxes and then come down underneath the number 10 and right beside where you selected the add button, select delete mark rows. Once you select delete mark rows, a pop-up will appear to confirm that you want to delete the selected rows, select OK, and the system will update and return it back to that one CFDA number and title. And so I'm gonna move along. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to add an attachment. So in line item um, 13, well, I'll, I'll show you the attachment at the bottom. Um, let's scroll down. Is there any, there's the applicant, no, no delinquent on federal debt. Um, Number 18, I'm going to select agree because I need to certify all the information that I've entered is accurate after you entered into the system. Um, but there's also an option to attach supporting documents as specific in your agency instructions. So that implies there may be specific agency instructions that you are required to submit as part of this process. To do so, um, you're going to select the paperclip icon beside um, wherever on the screen you see a paper cl uh, paper look, uh, paperclip icon, you can select that. Um, the Manage Attachment Screen, Cell Level Attachment Screen will appear. Next, we're going to select Choose File. Once you select Choose File, it takes you directly to wherever you want to choose. And I'm going to select the file, select Open. But it hasn't attached, right? I have to select Attach File. Once I attach file, the attach, select Attach File, the system gives me, tells me the file is successfully uploaded, a pop-up appears, and it tells me once the virus scan is complete, the upload, uploaded um, status will change from pending to save. So I'm going to select OK. Um, one important note here says this form cannot be certified um, or submitted until all attachments are in the saved status. So I'm going to say OK. And once I said OK, in my cell location, it gives me um, the file name, the data was uploaded, the current status, uploaded by, and because I uploaded this, if I want to delete this, I can, okay? So next I'm going to select close. Once I select close, on the screen, um, that, that um, paperclip, which is, was initially 100% gray, now has a green indicator over it, which tells you that there is an attachment that has been uploaded. So now I'm going to scroll up to and select Save. Once I select Save, it's going to save the information. I have the, have the, the ability to view and add attachments if necessary, which I just showed you how to add attachments. Now I'm going to Validate. Once I select Validate, the Validate verifies that I have completed all the information I need to complete inside of, <clears throat> inside of the report. And in this case, I have two errors, okay? So with OLDC forms, you cannot move forward with an error 
However, if it was a warning, you can move forward with a warning, okay? Again, you cannot move forward with an error, but you can move forward with a warning. So where do I go to fix these? Excellent. Within the error, on the second line item underneath that error, it gives you an option to go to error. If I select go to, it takes me exactly where I need to go. So I need to select the country. I'm going to select the U.S. United States. And I'm going to scroll up and go to my second era. And I have to enter a phone number. Now, let's try validating. So I'm going to validate. Now it's validating. After it's validated, because I'm following my, prog my report progress, depending on your role, um, you may not have the ability to certify, but that's the next step. Your grantee authorizing official will need to certify. So they, you, at this point, if you don't have the ability to certify, you will log out. Um, and your certified authorizing official, um, your grantee authorizing official will log in and then certify. To do so, um, on the same screen, they will simply select certify. Once they select certify, a pop-up will appear. It says you have the ability to sign in the signature area by pressing the click, uh, click to sign button. I'm going to say OK. And I wanted to show you that because now it moves me down to line 18B of this form. I'm going to select click to sign. Once I select click to sign, now my report prog progress is now certified. All right. Notice now in my options to select, I can view attachments, uncertified, submit, or prep. Okay. If corrections needed to be made, you can uncertify so that an individual can go in and make those edits. That's how edits, one edits are made. But we're going to move on with the process because I'm going to show you on the next form how to go back and make changes. We're going to select submit. Once I select submit, it says this will officially submit your report. Do you wish to submit? Do you wish to? I'm going to say OK. Once I say OK, it takes me directly to my report form status page. Here on my report form status page, it tells me the report submission. I can view the original. The current status is submitted, which means it has been submitted over to the grantor for the grantor to review. The status date, which is today's date, and the report action. Because the grantor has not gone in and may begin making changes, um, you still have the ability at this point to go in and make corrections and modifications. Once that um, grantor makes changes, you cannot do that or, or opens up the report and begins working on it. They would actually have to send it back to you for you to make changes. Um, notice the report status history um, in the middle of the screen on who, who has done what. And you can see even though we have validated with errors and that it was finally certified and who it was signed for. It would actually give you the username. So right now I'm logged in as ACF OLDC grantee. But if it was John Doe, it would give you his name. So I'm going to go back to form selection to get out of this form. And that completes the SF424M form. So I have a question in the chat. And the question is, I'm not seeing ACF 202 or ACF 421 report the selection options on the report name. Why would this be? Um, <clears throat> Trisha, I'd have you to reach out directly to your grants office contact um, to make sure you have the right access and that you should see the correct form. Does that's a little beyond the scope of today's training, but yeah, they should be able to assist you. <clears throat> <clears throat> You're welcome. And so now we're going to move on and we're going to get back to, we're going to move on to the next one. Before I do, um, I want to show you once I came back to the form selection, it brought me back to this form where we initially selected um, Arkansas as well as um, the SF424M. And I would like for you to take note on the screen for the reporting period, uh, the status is now submitted. And now in the action columns, I have a couple other icons. If I hover over the first one, I have the ability to revise this. 
The second icon allows you to take you directly to the report status page, which we just left. Also, there's an icon to print um, the latest version of the report. And then if you just want to view the latest, you can take a look at it. So there are a couple options for you on the form selection report. Form, excuse me, form selection screen. So now I'm going to go to all of DC Home because now I want to show you how to do the next form, which is our <clears> – <throat> let's see, which form are we doing here now? The 402 – 204, sorry. All right, so now that we're back at the OLD So homepage, you can see under my recent activity, because I was working in the SF424M, it's showing that the report is here. Here's the beauty of this. If I logged out and logged back in and I'd already begin or submitted the report, it is going to show right here on the screen. So you don't have to always go through report form entry and search. <clears throat> you can simply come here to the My Recent Activity. In the Actions column, you have the ability to view, go to the report status screen, and or revise. We'll come back and deal with that a little later. So now let's go and now let's work on the 204 form. To find that, we're going to go to Report Form Entry. And we're still going to deal with TANF right now, the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. And I'm going to still to keep it consistent or stick with Arkansas. And then a report name, we're dealing with the Supplemental ACF 204 form. And in this particular scenario, we need to actually select the grant funding period. So I'm going to select the very first one, which is starting October 2020 through September 30, 2024. Right? That's just how the system is set up to carry it. So I'm going to, in my name is my reporting period, you have your starting end dates, your type, and this is, this is a annual report. Report status, we have not started a status yet, so we don't see a status there. In our actions column, we have our blue plus line, which means we're going to need to create this report. We're going to recreate the report um, for up through September 30th, 2021. So that's the second option on the screen. I'm going to select the Create button in the actions column. Once I select the Create button, it will open me up to my report section screen. Now, this looks a little different because this report has multiple sections. And so the easiest way to complete this report is just to walk through each screen. Right? And so I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So here um, you have the report section for this grant program, the grantee name, the report name, the funding grant period, as well as your reporting period. Um, below that the uh, report section's description, it tells you what you have the capabilities to do. So it says selections in the drop-down list may include creating a section, clearing section data, deleting a section, editing sections, and printing sections. And again, this is based off the permissions that you have. Um, you should not be deleting any sections. <laughs> um, you're just going to be um, inputting information and saving. And so down in the table, um, underneath the, the description of what you have the capability to do, um, right above the table, again, we have the option to – this is kind of like our, our action icons, right? Um, so we have those right there in the screen. Also, you always have those listed at the bottom of all of your OLG screens. Then in, within the table, we have our section name. So we have attachments A, B, and then we have a certification. We have our performed action. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to talk you through that in just a moment. So the actions you take in terms of moving forward with completing each section. And the section status, which is currently initialized. So let's look at attachment A. So for attachment A, I'm going to go to perform action. And in this selection, I'm going to select the drop down for select action. As you can see, um, on the screen, we have the ability to clear section data, edit section data, or print section data. Um, in this case, we want to edit, all right? And then we're going to select edit and go. Once I select edit and go, it's going to take me directly to that section, all right? 
So once it took me to this section, I want to draw your attention to the main menu, OLDC menu, because it looks a little different from the previous form, because this is a report, right? So we have the OLDC home, your form selection, and your report sections. Your report sections is it's a different color blue and with a drop down because it allows you to talk between these sections while you're updating information. So you may save and go to another section and come back. That's the beauty of that. It allows you to toggle back and forth between those sections. Then you have the report and then report form status. Also on the screen, you have all of the information as it relates to the grant program, the program name, grantee name, report name, funding grant period, your reporting period, your report status and section status, and currently those statuses are initialized. Right below um, that description, um, you have your report progress bar. It is currently in initialized. Now, notice we have a few more steps here because depending on your workflow, um, different levels of approval may be required. Okay. So now I'm going to um, scroll down to my attachment A general instruction. Um, this form, from a functionality perspective, it operates just like the other form that I explained to you. So you see um, on the screen uh, within the forms, um, the screen that underlying means you have access to view additional information. So I'm gonna click on a link again and just kind of show you that once you select that link, it opens up and describes what information is in that field that you'll need to complete. And then I'll select OK to close that window. Um, so then we have a couple fields we need to update, and so I'm just entering test data into a lot of these fields for the purpose of training. And these numbers, these, this information may not make sense, and I don't expect it to because I'm just doing a test run here. Uh, but you want to enter all the information in its entirety, all of the required fields, and after you enter that information, either at the bottom of the screen or at the top of the screen, you can select Save. Once you select save, the next thing before you can validate, now you can validate now if you'd like, all right? Um, but you need to go to the next section. Um, first, I'm going to validate this, this page first to make sure I'm not missing anything. Now, I want to say this, even if you validate in the case that I just did, um, and you did not complete this, you don't want to do that. Even though it's not a required field, you will need to make sure that information included in this all the sections of this form. The validation part only validates the required field, but that does not mean that because it's not a required field that you should not enter information. Yes. Um, the question is, can you cut and paste text into those fields? Yes, you can. You can work off, let's say, in a Word document or, um, you know, something like that or email or whatever you're working in, and you can copy and paste it into the field. Yes, you can. So once now that I've completed this, this particular um, section, I'm going to select the option to go to next section. So I'm going to select next section, pop up appears, it says changes. Made on the screen will be lost from saving, so we don't we want to set cancel. So I'm going to save again, just to be precautionary because, you know, I don't want to lose anything. Now, now I'm going to say next, say OK. And it's going to take me to the next section. Now, why do I have this error? Because I validated back on the other screen. When that validation takes place, it validates all of the different reports, all of the sections. I wanted to show you that, all right? So I kind of did that intentionally so you can see. So we're gonna scroll down to this screen and I am going to just enter some information. All right? program type, I'm going to select state. And I'm just entering anything in at this, at this point. Okay. Prior program authorization, if required, let's just say no for now. Um, let's see what else we do. Okay. And so I'm going to say first. And now I'm going to validate again. Let's see what happens when I validate. Let's see what I'm missing now in this section. 
So we have one is an error. So I'm going to focus on the errors right now and not worry about the warnings because we can move forward with a warning, but not an error. So line two, that's line three, line five, line nine, and line 10 are required. I want to get that. So let's validate again. Okay, and I have one warning, all right? And so you can move forward with a warning, right? Uh, but not an error. So now that I've entered information in all of the fields, um, I'd like to continue. Before I move forward, Keisha, is there anything specific you'd like to cover as it relates to this form? I just wanted to bring it up. Okay, that's good news. Okay, great. And so now that we've done that, we're going to next, let's go to the next section. Uh oh, I hope I saved that. <laughs> I did. Okay, good news. So now it takes you to the certification, which is your third report section as it relates to this particular report. And this is where you certify. So at this point, if you've done everything you can do and you only have the ability to edit this but not certify, then the grantee authorizing official would log in and certify, take the step. So we're going to click to sign. I'm going to say, okay, in my pop-up box. And once you certify, you see the e-sign signature is complete. It tells you the name, title, and even the date it was it was submitted, okay? Next, I'm going to return to my previous section. And you're able to review everything. As you can see, you can review the information, all right? So let's go to um, report sections. That's on the main menu and go to the report section because what that does, it takes us back to the main um, report section's home. Also on this report section's home screen, notice in my section status, it says everything is certified. Um, my options for taking actions are view attachments, uncertify, submit with warnings, or print the full report. I have a question that says, what does warnings mean? Warning simply means that you, the information um, for the report that you should input the information, but it's just, it's for some reason, um, maybe you saved it and um, it's an allowable item that can move forward without it being 100% complete, if that makes sense. It's not good, it's not critical in nature to the point where it's gonna stop you from, from moving the report forward. That's all warning means. Um, I would, I would, in the case if you have a warning, um, I would just probably reconnect with uh, my grant office um, contact, staff contact, just to make sure that I'm entering the right information into that, um, into that field. So now the next step would be to submit. You're welcome. So I'm going to select submit here from my report section page. Once I select Submit, it says, this will officially submit your report. The pop-up will appear. Do you wish to continue? Select OK. Once you select OK, it takes me to my re uh, report form status screen. A pop-up appears. It says, we have received your report. This page shows all reports we have received along with the attachments. I'm going to select OK for that pop-up to appear. And now you'll see in the report um, all the activity as it relates to the report. So now I'm going to return back to Little DC Home. And now that I have, I am going to do a revision. Okay. So on the revision, which is you, which is likely that this will happen.
So to make revisions, um, to create a revision, the, the revision essentially could be a duplicate of the submitted form. Form Only the data fields are open and modifications to be made. It has to be open in order for you to make changes. Um, the original form does not change and can be accessed by view original, all right, from the report status page. Once changes are made to the revised form, it will be, it still be validated, certified, and submitted to complete the process. When a revision is submitted, the report form status page appears, and the most re recent revision is listed in the status table. So I'm going to show you how to revise an existing report. Went a little too far there, because I can come back and deal with that. So if there's a report that needs to be revised um, prior to it being submitted, submitted back to you as a revision, um, because you've been working on the form, it's going to sit right here in the My Recent Activity. And so we're going to revise the, temp the, the second one here, the SF424M. Um, so here in the table, we have the program name, the grantee name, um, the report, the grant is number itself, the report name, the reporting um, period, the activity date, the report status, and the actions column. In the actions column, when you select the arrow down button, it gives the option to review the report, <coughs> go to the report status page, or revise. Let's select revise. When I select revise, it automatically opened up the report. And so in this case, as you can see, it showed revision number one, right? And so it allows you to go in and make changes and update directly into the report. So that's how you make a revision to an existing report. And this is a summa it's already been submitted, and now you just want to make changes. Let's save. And you would go through the same process. Make your edit, save, validate, certify. So let's do it, validate. Because I want you to see this, how it works. And now I'm going to certify. And I click the sign option on the bottom of the screen. Give me one moment, which I knew that. And now I'm going to say submit with warning because we know there's a warning on this one. Once I submit with warning, it takes me back to my report, my report form status screen. And now you're able to see the report submission, revision one, and it shows you it was submitted with warnings, the date, and all the information for that particular report. So that's how you do a revision on an existing report that has been submitted. Now, had you not, had this not been submitted, that's correct. So the question is submitted by grantor hasn't reviewed it yet. That's the only time you can revise. Absolutely correct. Otherwise, it's a revision. So I just showed you how to do a revision. But if you want to revise the original report, now I'm going to show you how to do that. Because I just first I showed you how to do a revision off of one that was already been reviewed by the grantor. But now I'm going to show you how to do make edits to a report that has not been reviewed by a grantor. So let's go back to OLDC Home for my main menu selection. <clears throat> and let's look at ACF 204, which is now the second option because uh, no, M. Let's go to the M. I said that right, the four. The timestamp messed me up there a little bit there, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. So let's go back to um, the two four and the, um, by the, the ACF 204 form in the actions column, I'm going to select view.
So Beverly says, what date will be recognized as being received timely, the original date or the revision date? Well, the original date, I, okay, I would say to that, I can't answer that question. I would imagine that's something you'd have to work out with your, your grants office staff. Um, the original date is the date I would anticipate that you would actually um, you would actually be responsible for, and to be able to get everything in by, you'd have to work with your grantee specialist or your grantee office staff to identify what that revision date is for you. So I would have to defer that to the grants office staff for answer. <clears throat> so in the scenario I'm showing you now is how to make edits on a something I submitted but has not been touched by the grantor. So in this case, it has been submitted. So once I select it and opened it, I would now, it takes into my report section. But I want to go, where do I want to go here? I want to go to report form status. Once I go to report form status, it takes me to my report, report form status page. In order to make edits, I need to select the unsubmit button, unsubmit report in the report actions column. I'm going to select unsubmit report, a window will appear. It tells you this will officially withdraw your submission from ACS. So it's telling you it's going to pull it back so that grantor can't touch it. You're going to say OK. Once you say OK, waiting for the system to update here. My report action is now giving me the option to submit the report. I don't want to do that. I want to go over to report submission and edit original. So I select edit original. It takes me to my report sections. And now, as a grantee authorizing official, they have to uncertify the report before you can make changes. So I'm going to unselect the uncertified, excuse me, select the uncertified button. <laughs> And it tells you uncertified will remove all the signatures and the certified status. So that pop-up box will appear. I'm going to select OK. Once I select OK, my screen will refresh. And now in for my section statuses, you'll see for all of my section names, my statuses are now saved and validated or validated with errors. I can now go in and make changes. How do I do that? For the attachment A section, in the perform actions column, when I select actions from the drop down, I'm going to select edit section and go. Once I select go, it will take me directly into that report section. And now I can make changes. Okay. Now I'm going to return back to the OLDC home screen. And are there any additional questions before we continue? Great questions in the chat. I, I appreciate you guys um, listening and paying attention. You guys, are, your questions are telling me that, so thank you. Well, if you have questions, feel free to add those into the chat and I will continue with some additional information. So in terms of help and support, <clears throat> um, there are resources available for you underneath the news and tips. Um, link in the main menu. I showed that when we first started at the beginning of the training. Um, also, don't forget how to access uh, your grantee user account request form. You can do that directly on the Grant Solutions homepage. Um, we have a hyperlink here, which you, have, you will have access to PowerPoint, as well as from the login screen, you can access that as well. Um, resources, um, the, on, on the online data collection site will appear. For, um, within the system. So this gives you access to all of our resources that are readily available and accessible at your fingertips. For customized documentation, your documentation will be, will be provided, you, provided to you within five to seven business days. We anticipate. Um, in terms of our help and support, um, if you need assistance, you know, hours of operations on Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., ex excluding federal holidays, you can email us at help at grantsolutions.gov or call us at 866-577-0771 or 
And on that note, um, this does complete our training, but before we end today, I would like to bring Keisha back to the line to close out the session. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you, Patina. Um, there is an additional question that I saw that just came through. Um, that question is, how do you add other sections like B1 to the ACF 204? So uh, you can add sections to that. Um, I Let's see. Based on my goal, I'm going to go into this form right now and take a look at it. That's a revision. I don't want to do the revision. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, I'll have to say before you add sections, I'd have to defer you back to defer you back to your um, your grants office staff. They may not want you doing that. Instead, they may simply want you to attach files. So before you start adding sections, um, I would definitely suggest that you do that. So let's see here. So this is um, attachment A. Let's go to the next section. And so this is your section B, and then your next section, which is your certification page. So because I was instructed to simply stick with the reports that we have on the screen, uh, it doesn't appear you have the option to add more pages. But what you can do within your existing, um, <clears throat> these three um, sections you have, <coughs> is to add attachments and documents. Um, I would defer from adding other sections until we get approval to do so based off of how your workflow is set up. So the safest thing to do for now is just to probably attach your documents. Um, and then if your uh, grant program or you know whomever is managing this particular um, form wants you to add sections, um, then I can train on that. I haven't been told to be able to do that. So I'll just I'll have to direct you directly to your grants office staff for that because I don't want to have that conversation and that's not something you guys are supposed to do. Keisha, I'll pick it back to you. Thanks, Bettina. Um, so mm -hmm. for more information on that question, um, um, I will speak with my colleagues and we will make sure and get that information out to you um, on whether to add sections, um, additional sections, or whether to just, um, we prefer you to add a, additional attachments. Um, and then just for a couple of things, just to add a, a, a few additional clarification, um, there was a question regarding um, the, the 4125 report and also the 202 reports not being, in, um, not being available to you. Those reports are not in OLDC. Um, they, are, they are submitted via different avenues. So when you go in to look at your reports, you will not see those there. So if you don't have them, that is okay. Um, let's see. Um, also, there's a question about when is a report, um, when do we look at as a report being submitted timely? I would encourage you on that. You need to work with your regional office. Um, depending on situations and what's going on, um, that's actually going to that's going to determine what's a timely report and what's not. So it, it, it really is more circumstantial. So please work directly with your regional office and they will be able to help you out with that. They'll work closely with that with you with that and let you know and, and be able to determine whether that report is timely or not. Um, lastly, um, Patina covered um, unsubmitting a report. Many of you will probably not have the ability to click to unsubmit reports. Um, let me explain. A lot of times what we have tended to see happen in the past is reports were being unsubmitted when we actually needed those reports to be revised. So I will say, if to please, before you decide to unsubmit a report, a report, please work directly with your regional office again to make sure that that is something um, that uh, that you know, we prefer. In certain situations, unsubmitting is absolutely the correct way to go. Um, a lot of times, though, it is best to go ahead and revise that report versus unsubmitting it. So before you do that, please make sure you, um, um, you work directly with your regional office. If you go in, um, if you go in and you see that, um, uh, you know, that you don't have 
the ability to unsubmit. Um, there's probably a reason for that. Contact your regional office. Um, there is a question, should the ACF 202 report be submitted in OLDC? No, it is submitted via different avenues. Um, uh, you, you please work with your regional office again on that. Um, if you have questions on how to get those reports submitted, you should be receiving information on how it's, uh, ACF 202 should be submitted. It, it, but it is not a report that goes into OLDC. Before we head out, um, are there any additional questions? Well, great. Um, please help me um, thank Patina for all of her work and for providing this training to us. Um, it was a lot of information and um, the great thing that I think we have the ability to do is she was able to show you in a live demonstration um, what it actually looks like um, and how and where to go to actually um, complete everything in OLDC. So thank you so much, Bettina, um, for taking your time. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, to all of you, please remember um, our survey as we're closing out. Um, a link to the Survey Monkey was posted in the chat. Um, it should also be made available again once um, we're closing out. So please, before you, before you leave, make sure and submit your reviews via the, the, the link to the Survey Monkey. Um, I appreciate everyone taking their time. I know it's late for some, so I will not hold you any further. If you have any additional questions, please don't, feel, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to your regional office. Um, you may even feel free to reach out to me. Um, it's Keisha.Russell at acf.hhs.gov. Um, but thank you all for your time. We appreciate it and hope everyone has um, a wonderful time to the rest of your day. Thank you.